Hello everyone, John Trigger 12 back here again with another video, and I'm back with another episode of John Trigger 12's comic book reads. Basically, as I always say, I have a humongous comic book collection that ranges from the Silver Age all the way to the Modern Age, and I like to just randomly choose from my collection and review it and read it through for you guys to enjoy and of course inspire new up and coming readers to the comic book industry get more in touch with your fellow source material but today I'm not doing a comic book read I'm doing once again another graphic novel review and of course today I have the Emperor the King the Almighty Alan Moore's Batman the Killing Joke if you are not a Batman fan you need to pimp slap yourself if you're not an Alan Moore fan, you need to pimp slap yourself. And if you do not own Alan Moore's Batman the Killing Joke, you need to pimp slap yourself. I've said this plenty too many times, but it definitely means something. It's like record collecting. You're a record, you're a uh, album by album collector. You love it. You just need more albums. You go to the vinyl store and you fucking buy more albums of your favorite bands. But if you do not own a Bob Dylan album or a Beatles album on vinyl, you need to shoot yourself. And it's the same way with The Killing Joke. If you're going to be in the comics and not have anything that has Alan Moore's name on it, or let alone, obviously, Batman The Killing Joke, you need to, pimp you need to just do something because you're definitely not doing the right things in life. But personally, I digress with all you guys. Hopefully, by the end of this, you'll be encouraged to look up The Killing Joke. I'm sure all, all of you have already heard of it. It's definitely been the main insp um, inspiration for various other Batman movies. And of course, J Joker performances like Jack Nicholson's The Joker. And of course, Heath Ledger's The Joker. And let alone various other great Joker impressionists and Joker voice actors and animation. So, of course, The Killing Joke has been a main source of inspiration not only in Batman comic books, Batman animation films, but of course, Batman the franchise series. So, let's get right down into this. The Killing Joke is definitely a great piece. Personally, I'm reviewing towards the, the deluxe edition. There's various different editions to The Killing Joke. There's, you know, your trade paperbacks, your comic books, your... Uh, your deluxe editions, the special editions with like, with um, DC figurettes from the book, you know, like Joker in his Hawaiian outfit or Batman, or just various other stuff like that. You got you you can get it anywhere. You there's various different versions of the Killing Joke. Today I have Alan Moore's Batman: The Killing Joke, the deluxe edition with an introduction by Tim Sale. I personally love it. It's really awesome. It just feels nice. The texture's great. The artwork's nice. It's very slick and just beautiful looking. I love graphic novels that just look so beautiful. They can just stand alone as like their own thing. Of course, the cover is just amazing. It's of course the Joker and all his gear. And he has a really nice uh, old film camera taking a shot and, and of course says simply smile in the bubble. So it's just really nice and really entertaining and cool looking. But let's get right down into this. Uh, personally, it's one of my favorite Alan Moore books next to Watchmen and various others. It's definitely the definitive Joker story. Of course, it takes place back in like, I would like to say the 70s version of Batman because... Obviously, we're dealing with like the, with like the blue and gray kind of Batman, was still with rocking the, the the shield on his chest. Of course, you have the Batmobile where it still featured a, a bat, uh, shield on on the on the front of it. So of course, there's just various other versions, but I like to think this is set somewhere in the 70s of the of the character. But, of course, let's get right down into it. Uh, Batman, of course, comes to Arkham Asylum, where he needs to interrogate the Joker, who's obviously always planning something, and the Batman always needs to interrogate him just to get information. It's a rainy night. It's raining at Arkham Asylum. It's really dark. Obviously, Gordon's there to help out the Batman. Obviously, we get some references to various other characters. You know, we get um, a pretty nice shot of Harvey Dent. Slash Two Face and, and Arkham Asylum, which is pretty cool. But then we get into the Joker, and of course, uh, Joker and Batman have this really long conversation about how it will end. You know, Batman's really 
kind of sick of Joker's antics, and he he knows he realizes that the end is near. He knows that eventually their relationship together and their battle towards crime and justice will eventually end in a very bloody way. And and Batman's trying to reconcile and Joker, trying to get him to see things through his side of things so they don't really end that way because Batman doesn't want to end things brutally with the Joker he wants to reconcile with him he wants to be he wants to rehabilitate him you know but then realizes that the Joker that he's been talking to is an imposter and then of course leads up to a whole nother scenario of just terrible events the Joker is obviously on the circus he somehow of He's in the circus, guys. It's kind of obvious, but... And, of course, the Joker always gets out of Arkham Asylum. He's like the ninja of escaping and getting out of Arkham Asylum. He's done it so many times, it's almost hilarious at this point in time. But let's move off of that. Uh, various stages in, in The Killing Joke, we get flashback sequences. And most of these flashback sequences take place many years prior to the to the events in this book. Uh, it depicts the origins of the Joker and why he is what uh, what he is. We don't really get a name as to what Joker's real name is, but we get the the impression that he did have a wife, he did have a family, he had an uh, up and coming child, and he was just uh, dealing with the ends of means, you know, he w he's obviously dealing with uh, the sacrifices that he has to take in life, he also has various money issues, and he can't hack it as a good uh, work jockey, if you will, he's, he's definitely hard at work trying to become a comedian, but he obviously sucks at it, so, yeah, ironically, and of course, just, it just goes in and out of those flashbacks, um, throughout the throughout the the book series so it's really nice we get some good um killings in the in this book we get some batman tech good old batman detective work but then we parallel from that specifically to the most iconic scene in this book which of course has to be the the shooting of barbara gordon it's vicious it's crazy it's unexpected and it's iconic it's definitely the the moment where the joker paralyzes Barba, which causes her to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life and in the comic book series and of course lead her to become the Oracle which of course I'm sure all you guys already know uh, it's definitely vicious it's cool the writing's great I love the writing of what Joker says and, and how um, Gordon like deals with it and all this stuff then we parallel back to more flashbacks we get into how Joker be um, turns to a life of crime and then we parallel from that in and out of uh, flashbacks, of course, right in, back into, uh, we're back in the hospital. Barbara Gordon's, of course, survived her attack from Joker, and of course, Batman's there to reconcile with her, trying to get into the mind of what happened, and of course, she's in tears. The, you can just tell from the artwork alone, the sheer brutality that Joker must have uh, inflicted on her, just based off her reaction from waking up, I mean... Just seeing Batman just put her to tears. It's just really amazing. But then we get back to the carnival. Joker's captured Gordon. He's got him naked. He's torturing him by featuring just various acts of torture towards him. We get back into some good old flashback sequences. We get to see the Joker uh, get uh, more in depictions as to his life of crime. Of course, uh, back to real time where we get... Uh, Gordon's torturing of what happened to Barbara. Apparently, uh, Joker didn't just shoot her. He obviously tortured her, raped her, uh, brutalized her. Just various other types of just horrible acts of violence towards the Joker. And Joker's just loving it. You see in every sequence and panel in this book that Joker is just loving the torture. He's just smiling with ease with such a bloody smile. It just freaks you out. As much as I'm a Joker fan, this makes you really want to really have like doubts about the Joker. It really makes you want to back off from him a bit. But then we get back into the to the flashback sequences. We get the we get a good uh, depiction of Red Hood, of course. Which, uh, as you all know, Red Hood is obviously uh, a prior persona of the Joker, prior to him becoming the Joker, which of course leads him to end up in the the great scenario, which of course has been depicted all through time and complex history, depict um specifically Batman history, which is of course 
Batman has to fight off the Red Hood. Red Hood f falls down a vat of chemicals and, of course, comes out with his face horribly bleached and just demented. And, of course, he is wakened to a horrible-looking face and just starts to laugh and just goes on about this really iconic and a horrible laugh that we will never, ever fucking escape from. But we move off from that. Batman has discovered the Joker's plan. He He's obviously done all good detective work, which makes sense. The jo you know, Batman is, of course, knows everything about the Joker, so obviously realizes he's at the carnival. We have this great battle between Joker and Batman. Really awesome artwork once again. Really nice fight scenes. We get some great old shots of Joker and Batman versus just various other stuff like that. But at the end, Joker realizes that it's over. This is the last stand. And of course, Joker has no other way to end this battle with just a joke. Which leads to Batman actually smiling and having a little laugh at the expense of Joker. So, Which leads into a horrible long laugh. Which obviously ends at a stop. And of course, the great thing about this book is that it's open-ended. You kind of depict what you visualize as what the ending is. Does Batman take in the Joker or does Batman kill him? Of course, the big uh, misconception of the book has been that Batman defeats the Joker and takes him in. But of course, it's it depends on how you look at it. Various comic book writers and artists in the industry itself, in DC Comics, and a part of and who are big parts of Batman history, have said that uh, Batman actually kills a Joker, which is why you know Joker's laugh ends so immediately. So of course, that's the great thing about Alan Moore's The Killing Joke. You kind of get the feeling that Batman does cross the line. And ends the life of the Joker. It's it's not out of this realm of possibility. There's been plenty of uh, great references to the killing of Joker, which is caused by Batman. So it's 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 it, I don't have a fault with it. But the book is amazing. I truly encourage everyone to check it out. If you're not a Batman fan, you're missing out because this is one of the greatest staples in Batman history. Next to stuff like Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. The Dark Knight Returns is the only book I can reference as is just as close as a great Batman vs. Joker story as The Killing Joke. And it's just amazing. Alan Moore's masterpiece, The Killing Joke, uh, obviously with depictions of great artwork by the great Brian Boland. Definitely amazing. Also, you get really nice artwork. If you get the deluxe edition, you get a, a, and also a side story, which, of course, is really amazing in and of itself, depicting the Penguin, and, of course, the continuation of Batman doing some good old detective work, and also we get some great Batcave scenes. It's all told by the story of this really wacky, crazy Arkham Asylum inmate type of dude. It's really crazy and awesome. But also, the, the big thing that I like about it is that the artwork's just really amazing. and we j I just love great special deluxe editions of books because we get some, some great rough drafts of artwork, some good design flaws, some good old design drafts of characters in the book. It's just awesome. The Joker is the most iconic villain in comic book history, let alone Batman history. So, if you're a fan, you need to check out this book. Go to your comic book store or even go online. I'm pretty sure Amazon or any other uh, store online it definitely has it. I'm sure you can find it. The Killing Joke is definitely amazing. I personally... um refer to you, refer to you to get any type of version of the killing joke as long as as it has Alan Moore or Batman the Killing Joke on it get it you're not a comic book fan unless you have this and it's truly an amazing book it's definitely a great book i personally refer to anybody and everyone who's in the comic book industry you definitely need to check it out but that's going to be it what did you guys think about the killing joke the killing joke is my definitive favorite batman slash joker story but what do you guys think did you love it? Did you hate it? What do you think about the story? And are you going to pick it up? And of course, just tell me about your overall thoughts on this specific video in the comments section. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been John Trigger 12 with another episode of John Trigger 12's Comic Book Reads. And I'll definitely be back with more episodes this week. Hope you guys enjoyed.